This is the 13th video in our series looking at how you set up and configure a Synology NAS running Distation Manager 7. In previous videos, we created network shares and groups on our NAS. However, in order for the users of our home network to be able to access our shares, we're going to need to create user accounts for them to use. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how you create user accounts on a Synology NAS. If we log back into Distation Manager using our administrator's credentials, from the desktop of our DSM, if we locate and select Control Panel, under the heading File Sharing, we now need to choose the option User and Group. Before we create our first user account, we need to check the settings in the Advanced tab. As you can see, within Advanced, we have a number of settings that relate to all user accounts. So let's run through what they do and make changes where appropriate. First, we have allowed non-administrator users to reset forgotten passwords via email. While we could enable this option, as it will only work once we've configured notifications, for now we will leave the setting disabled. Force password change after the administrator resets user password is a good way for a user to take back control of their account by having to choose their own password to use. However, as this setting will only work if a user is logged into the station manager, once again we will leave this setting disabled. Applied password strength rules will be enabled by default, so it is important that we have these options enabled as they will help to keep our NAS safe. As you can see, we next have a list of all the rules that allow us to enhance password strength. However, as by default all of these settings are enabled, we will not be making any changes. Let's quickly run through every option. Exclude name and description of a user from the password is a way to ensure that an obvious password is not used, for example, my doodads1. Include mixed case ensures that a password uses both upper and lower case letters. Include numeric characters will force a password to include numbers, so for example you might use zeros instead of O's. As the option include special characters is enabled, you might want to use the at symbol to replace the letter A or the dollar sign to replace the letter S. You could also use an apostrophe or question mark at the end of your password. The option Exclude Common Password will prevent you from using something like Password123. While minimum password is set to 8 characters, if you intend for your NAS to be accessible from the internet, we recommend that you make the minimal password length 10 or 12 characters. The idea being that the longer the password, the more difficult it will be to hack a user account. Password History is an option that prevents someone from reusing a previously used password for a set number of times. However, while this setting might be used within a business environment, in a home network it can cause a lot of frustration, so we will leave it disabled. Enable password expiration will allow us to control when a password expires. However, as anyone who has enabled this function will tell you, having to regularly change your password can lead to a lot of frustrated users. So while from a security perspective, we should be enabling password expiration, for an easier family life, we've decided to leave this setting disabled. Instead, if you are looking to make your user accounts more secure, we recommend that you take a look at two-factor authentication, something that we will be looking at in a future video. Finally, we have user home service, which by default will not have been enabled in Distation Manager 7. The basic idea of user home service is that for each user account created on our NAS, we will also automatically create a folder for that user so that they can privately store data. However, as user home services can also be used to keep data private for those using certain Synology applications, we're going to enable this feature now. After enabling home service, we will need to confirm the location where we will be storing home folders. However, as our NAS currently only consists of a single volume, we will use Volume 1. It's worth noting that Recycle Bin is currently not enabled for our home folders. After selecting Apply, we're ready to create a user account. 
As you can see, under User we have four buttons. Create, Edit, Delete and Delegate. While three of these buttons are fairly self-explanatory, as Delegate is perhaps more relevant to a business environment, we will be looking in more depth at Delegate in a separate video. If we choose Create, we are presented with a drop-down menu that will allow us to create a user, import a user, or copy an existing user account. Let's select Create User to open the User Creation Wizard. If the user that we are creating the account for is using a Windows computer, by making the username the same as the one that they use to log into Windows, it will make it easier to access network shares from that computer. While description does not need to be filled, it is a good idea to enter something as it will help to identify what sort of account has been created on your NAS. Email address is a field that we're going to leave blank. However, this is a field that we can easily update in the future. In the password field, we need to enter a password which conforms to the password rules that we reviewed earlier. If this password matches the password this user uses to access their Windows computer, this user will not be prompted for a username or password when they open network shares from their computer. As we have not yet configured notification services, there is no point in enabling send a notification email to the newly created user. For the option, disallow the user to change account password, we're going to leave it unticked. However, you might want to enable this setting for Windows users to help ensure that a user can't change their password and lose access to their network shares. When we select Next, we are shown a list of the groups that we can join. It's worth noting that by default, any new user accounts that we create will automatically be placed in the users group. However, as we also want this user to have read-write access over the software and manuals folders, we're going to add them to the super users group. After selecting next, we're shown a list of the network shares that we've already created on our NAS, along with the access permissions that this user will have. So while we could adjust access permissions here, as we've already set permissions using groups, there's no need to make any changes. Assign user quota is a way to limit how much storage space a user can use on our NAS. While you might think that it is a good idea to enable this setting now, as our NAS is currently empty, there's no need to enable this feature until we have a better idea of how our users are utilizing the space in our NAS. Assign application permissions is a way to control which applications on our NAS this user has access to. However, as we are in the process of setting up our NAS, we will use the default settings. Then if in the future we need to make any changes, we can make those changes using group permissions. In a home environment, it's unlikely that your users will be using applications like FTP, FileStation and rsync. So for now, we will not set any speed limits to the amount of bandwidth that our user can have when using these applications. When we select Next, we're provided with a summary of the settings for our user account. Finally, by choosing Done, we create a user account on our NAS. We now need to create the user accounts for any other users who will be using our NAS. So to summarize, in this video, we took a look at how you create user accounts on a Synology NAS. However, before we started, we reviewed the settings in advanced to see what password rules our NAS is using and enabled home service in preparation for the installation of applications like Synology Drive and Audio Station. Then finally, as we created a new user account, we discussed the options available in the user account creation wizard. In the next video in this series, we're going to demonstrate how from within macOS, we can use the user account we just created to access the network shares on our NAS.